Alrighty. It's time to hop in our first of two games here today. Do I have my pen tool up? Yes, I do. Alright. And this game, we're watching the orcs play against me. And we're focusing mainly on securing a win rather than a draw and how to play safer while ahead and like secure your it secure your advantage essentially first of all i set up in some cups here against earthquake or i i do i do a weird setup i always do a weird setup <laughs> Instant touchback, orcs get to keep the ball where they want it. And they decide to give it to a black orc, which is fine. But if you're gonna give it to a black orc, give it to the one that's unmarked. Is uh, my personal opinion there. Again, on the LLS, start off with a good hit. Not playing against a lizard or anything, I don't believe. Now I will say, before you take this foul, should move the ball here because I can just bring in a guard and hit with Dauntless and get the ball down and potentially get a pickup. So before you do your fouls, always, 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 especially when you don't have a bribe, you want to get your ball safe. So your orcs, you have until in turn eight to score. You're not in a rush. Bring the ball back here. And then you got plenty of defense to keep the ball safe, but just move the ball at least one square you could even use it as part of the assist to make the to make the foul better just move one square and that protects the ball so it works off to a great start like yeah you should you should have done that move first and then this this move actually Instead of protecting the ball back here, so right now I've got a path here. I can run up and harass the cage or whatever right next to the ball. If you left them here, I had to swing out wide. I'm not able to get to the ball. And e even if I cut corners, I can only get to like right here. So, especially when, you're, when you've got a wide line like this, Ball safe. So. And. Or I might blitz down that player and come mark you, but I won't be able to get hit on the ball, which is the most important thing to protect from. This just gives up a little bit of space. And especially bringing it in on the other side gives up a lot of space. This actually makes the ball pretty easy to deal with the cage a little bit. Be really aggressive. Here, I'm just getting some stuff in the way, making sure you don't have an easy walk through the pitch. Now, frenzy my way up here. Get the Dauntless on the second hit. And you could argue I should have dodged off there, uh, but I was hoping to at least draw the draw the guard, or maybe get lucky and get like a both down hit. 
not allow you to be able to remove this cage corner. But I do get pound and punished. But you also have other stuff based, so that I'm like, you know, trade hits, that'd be fine. Power Apo. And that turns out to be a horrible decision because I get my team basically just deleted. We're down three players, and then the orcs just start basing. Hey, Alcas. Thank you, thank you. Much appreciated. And we do get gang fouled. And this, I think, this is a very greedy foul. Before you take this foul, if, if this was a send-off, I have a hit on the ball. Like, even if I can only get red dice or one die. But I, I have a lot of guard. I have a dauntless piece. I can get two dice on this ball and break the ball free. And this right here, corners do not protect the ball. Like, this this is, uh, you gotta put, put yourself in your... Think about your diagonals. Diagonals are very easy to abuse. And here you see, I do come and do this. Mark up these pieces. And I do take my blitz on one dice against no block, no dodge. And I get the pal. And a removal. And I do actually have the ball, but not quite able to defend it here. But I do start to set up a good defense there. Hey, Elliot, how's it going? It is my birthday, it is. Oh, it is? That's kind of funny. Not able to hold on to the ball, because we did get based up. Another removal. We, we might be twins. Ah, yes. Twins separated by several years of age. Thank you, Yeti. Much appreciated. And then, like, this foul is fine. Uh, but really, I would be going after the ball with this Agi 2 dodge first. You're being really greedy with your foul timing. And that basically secures the point. I believe I don't really get much happen here. I I dodge off to go threaten the score. And here I'm I'm just trying to force the score. Should be noted, I am down. Also, uh, this troll was left off on accident. <laughs> Thanks you, thank you, Elliot. I, I really do appreciate it. And I don't drink beer, but I'll, I'll get myself a pina colada. I've actually got a sensitivity to hops. 
It's uh, sort of like how uh, people with cilantro taste like soap. Similar to me with hops. Oh. Yeah, but you, you've given me two subs. I can get a I can get a pina colada. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I was gonna get it anyways. Yep. Fail that. Don't get the one die. And I'm just like uh, I'm a bit boned at this point. Oh yeah, cocktails are good. I I've been uh. Been enjoying whiskey sours lately. And at this point, you could argue that I'm supposed to just like stay on the ground. <laughs> Probably would have been better for my uh, player health. Ah, uh, I don't, I don't enjoy champagne. Do not. But yep, this is a good foul. Also, you want to control the diagonals a little bit. Uh, if you put someone on a diagonal, you limit their music. If you block someone's diagonal path, you limit their movement by a lot. So if you notice, um, it, I don't really have an example during this half because I have no players on the pitch, but uh, I'll try to point it out. But usually when I'm trying to screen people off, I explicitly put people on diagonals for that reason. I might enjoy it in a cocktail, but I, I also just uh, wouldn't buy champagne. That'd be something like I would try if somebody happened to have whiskey and uh, champagne at the same time. But I also uh, don't drink very frequently at, th at the moment because uh, I'm currently doing a lot of weight loss and uh, I find it hard to do anything more than maintain weight while drinking. Because uh, alcohol has so many calories when you like cocktails and stuff. And it's like, I don't find it hard to not gain weight while drinking, but I find it, I find it hard to lose. But at this point, there's not really much I can do. And if, if, if this piece had been here, I would have not had a chance at the ball at all. Oh no, my journey's already gone great. I'm already down, um, I think it's like... 30 pounds since uh last not last november november before last and that that's uh weight loss while also doing strength training so it's also not just 30 pounds of weight it's also the whatever weight i've i've lost and replaced with uh with uh muscles as well Yeah, yeah. It's like an hour of running, for sure. Because I also do, uh, I do the cardio. Um, on, on Fridays I run, like, seven miles. And that usually uses, like, a shit ton of calories. Running, running is great for calorie use, but uh, would not recommend if you don't have like audiobooks or music you want to listen to. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, yeah, well, you see, you see the problem with both bikes and we're going to pause the game so I can get on this rant. The problem. Yeah, that, that was a no score due degree. That's fine. Because like I have no players. Seven versus eleven. Um, the problem with swimming is I don't have a pool, nor do I want to go to one, even though, like, it's it's great for exercise, calorie use, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but also, uh, two, I don't like the feel of chlorine in my hair. Makes me, makes it get all dry and awful. And the problem with bikes is I don't have any, anywhere to ride a bike here in car-centric America without getting hit. And I don't want to drive 20 minutes to a park to go ride a bike. <laughs> oh. No more hair weight. Yay! Oh. Oh. But also, uh, the, the idea that running has gives you joint problems is actually been disproven in a lot of studies. Like, unless you're running excessive amounts for your your ability, like, running doesn't have any effect on your joints. Or, if you already have arthritis, it can activate that pain. Long jokes are ace. <laughs> yeah, uh, this blitz screws me because I was going for a quick score to try and get get a basically guaranteed tie, get a KO roll. Blitz comes to mess me up. And this is fine. Uh, I, I would say that if you're trying to block people from a, a path and they've got less players than you, you can afford to do this, but more secure. Go... Go two sets of columns, like this. Two tiles of space in between. And I can't get down this way without, like, really hard dice rolls. And it uses the same amount of players, and you also keep this advantage over here. Because at, at this point, you should you should have a pretty easy win this game. Because I am running out of pieces. I am, I am trapping myself in a corner over here, but I don't really have many options. I don't have anywhere to go with this ball. Here you do follow up, and you do give me a hit, uh, especially with Dauntless against Strength 4. Giving me the extra hit is potentially risky. Blitzing with a troll. Probably okay. But uh, the thing with the troll blitz is you can't really reroll it.
Here we see I do get to die with Dauntless. And I do free this up with Frenzy Dauntless hit that did not get Dauntless, but got it on the second one. Because red dice are not nearly as scary as you might think. Then I run the ball backwards, because backwards is always an option. Please, an easy route. Uh, I believe I misclicked that. Because I meant, I meant to hit this on red. I meant to hit something on red dice. I did not mean to take a six plus dodge. Gets Kapow. Yep, that's a good hit. Now you just gotta secure my players. And that, that was a misclick. Oh yeah yeah uh don't don't worry it, it gets worse. <laughs> but the cool thing about Brett's is I do always feel like I had options with this team. Had options. Past tense. And then I do Brett bullshit, which this felt good. <laughs> I had options, all of them were bad, but this one happened to work. But yeah, that that's another another spot where here's here's a corner. Corners are unsecure. If a player was right here, like if you bring this Mighty Blow Blitzer and put them right there before doing the rest of the actions, or this other, this Tackle Blitzer right here, I actually had no out if you blocked this corner from my player. So you definitely want to watch those corners. And taking a Troll Blitz is super risky, and it's not going to give you SPP here. Because when, you, when you're going for a surf, you, it doesn't matter. And that's where I get niggled because I power up out earlier. Uh, that wouldn't be too big a deal. Like, you know, a niggle is rough, but you gotta keep, gotta keep the blitzer because it's got guard. But the, the break discrepancy of this game was massive. there that's good you push him in front of there so it's surf potential if I stand him up here you'll follow him up to there yep so this, this is fine thank you glob I appreciate it and it, that does force the score so no no complaints about forcing the score And one of three KOs comes back. And I now have to defend with six players. <laughs> Getting a touchdown is Brett's is basically a win. Uh it it no, because uh from here, if I were the orcs, right? If I'm the Orc player, you're 1-0, it's 1-0, you've got five turns to get two scores, I'll go for a quick score into a quick turnover with how few players I have. So be extra aggressive with removals, but get into position to score on, on your second turn here.
Yep, so this is good. Follow that. That's a stun. That, you should be in a great position to score in two turns. And then at the end, end here, you foul something with, like, your guard line. You don't need them. There's no players left. So that's good. Yep. And also get into scoring position. So, like, just stand here on the 8, and you would have been in scoring position. And then bring this player up to a scoring position. Mark everything. And this you should have based over here. Mark me, that's good. Mark right there. Yeah, that's fine. Get in scoring position. Because the most important thing here is to get into scoring position before the throw or handoff or whatever. And primarily, this is not... This is not safe. Because this corner is wide open. I can take these 3 plus dodges. And I actually get 2 dice, 2 dice here. But I don't actually end up going for the, the blitz, because I had used the dodge already. So I just go for the mark with you, and I take this dodge. Oh. Actually, surprisingly, I just didn't take the hit on the ball anyways, but I, I knew I already had the reroll down. Uh, the blitzer was based on the ground, though. So that was, that was still fine. But also, yes, like, you moved off that blitzer and gave me the way out. And at this point, you can just cage down the pitch, but also you should have been set up to score on this turn to go for the win. I have so few players, I have few options. I'm having to take risky, risky plays just to delay you by a turn. Yep, and so something should be in scoring position here. So this is scoring position, but go ahead and get into no GFI scoring position. Like, you can make this way more secure. Uh, I highly recommend figure out where the ball is going to go before you move things. Like, don't figure out where the ball goes last. Figure out where the ball goes and then figure out, figure out where you want the ball to be. Determine if you can make it safe. And then if you can't, just lower your expectations of where you want it to be. Because you could have had the ball on the 8 or the 7. You could have had this in scoring position up here. You could have hit this stuff off. You could have been in a cage. And, yeah, we will go ahead and look at the... <laughs> uh, and we'll, we'll figure out all the other stuff here with the chain pushes. Because glava has got a great point. Um, if you're not familiar with chain pushes, this will be a great... Yeah, so right here. Let's get to this chain push. This should be a chain, right here. Because you want to be able to chain the ball off. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So, chain pushers are one of two configurations always. You either have a T-shape... And then you bring the hit in to finish the T. And then you can push in one of three directions. Or you have a box, which is you have four players and you hit one from the diagonal. You can push in one of the three directions. So you get boxes and you've got you've got T's. And all of chain pushing is just making boxes and T's. Yes, exactly. So, when you're going for, like, double double chains, you're just pushing a player into a box or pushing a player into a tee to get that next hit. So, it's just chains of boxes and tees. It's simple, but can be very difficult once you get into the more complex stuff. Uh, pen tools are actually great for chain pushes in-game, if you can figure them out fast enough. But here, you just want to blitz off 
right there. And if you get a pal, you freed off two players off the ball. Yeah. So you take the splits. Boom, boom. Chain push because this is a box here. Push both of these off. And then you come up here in scoring position uncontested. And then you defend it. And then you go for the win, even though you only have two turns left. But highly, highly recommend when you're this many players up, you have a full team. The only person out is a send-off from fouling. I have so few players left. Brutalize me this turn. Take all the hits you can. Take your dodges. Get into a solid cage. Now go for a surf here. Don't get it. But I went for that surf because that is in scoring range. I do go for the dodge and just let it stay on the ground. But I'm, I'm still trying to win the game here by preventing a score. And the only way I can prevent the score is if you just don't put your ball into a cage, don't go for the score yourself. You should push me here. Because you want to push away from where the ball's going to be. And the balls should be coming down here, down the pitch. Push me away from it, t steal that movement, and then stand on that diagonal. And here, I think I try to punish this. Yeah, try to move the ball before blocks. Definitely. Your turn ordering really needed to work this game. It just didn't get punished. But just because your turn ordering didn't get punished doesn't mean your turn, turn ordering was correct. Here, I get, get a punch. I free up this player. I believe that was my attempted blitz. No, okay. I blitzed this with the guard. Okay. So th this was my attempt to base. And this honestly isn't that hard to clear either. Because this should actually be a, a chain surf. So here, I've made you a nice little box. Right? So we've got a box... The way you deal with this right here, you blitz here, you get a push, push me there, and then you surf this piece. At this point, you've only got two turns. I don't think you can win the game. I don't think you've scored fast enough to win. You're just accepting the draw. You've accepted the draw. You surf this off, and this is now on the ground. Ideally, this is on the ground, but even if it's just a push, you take this two die back... Just hit it off and cage up. Take your other punches, and you you just got to protect the ball. And I just see you, you have 11 players, but you're not just screening off the ball. Because to protect the ball, it's you, you just got to get that two-tile gap with players in between on, on the edges. And that's really hard to deal with, unless you have Agi-5 Leap or some sort of mechanism that gets you through. But we do see that here. And this strength busts the Blitzer. And because that was, like, my fun piece, I do delete the team after this game. Hey, Girthquake. No, 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 no problem, no problem. It, it's in a VOD for a reason. <laughs> no. 
Yeah, and, and then I... This doesn't matter, because I just blatantly said, don't, don't even bother, I'm pressing end turn. So th this wasn't, like, poor setup or anything. I, leg I legitimately was just going to hit, hit end turn. Yeah, Glotha, that is true. Uh, lack of stall uh, means no riot. But at the same time, I was I was done with the game at this point. Because, let's look at this disparity here. I got two armor breaks that game versus 16. Um, with not very different... There was no foul. We we just pressed enter. <laughs> but I, I had only 14 less blocks. And way less removals. And we both only had one mighty blow. So... Yeah, we did teach that, but this is actually I'm making a different point. Uh, Girthquake's dice were very, very good, but only secured a draw. Which, which goes to show that just having good dice is not good enough. You also need to have solid play. That's the point being made, Glava. You, you're jumping the gun. You're jumping the gun. So even though like I felt like my dice were atrocious, right? I, I still managed to eke out the draw, uh, but I did have 100% GFI, so my dice were actually above average, so I, I really lucked out there. <laughs> but no, look at this. Look at this, Glava. Look at this and say that to my face. Look at these dice. 7 versus 19. All pushes. Make me sad. And then here were the Tampa Bay Jawbreakers dice. Say say something about dice rolls to me again, Glava. <laughs> say it. I'm waiting. <laughs> oh. But I, I I refrained from saying anything about dice luck like, for like 95% of the game, Glava. <laughs> oh. But, uh, oh, I forgot to put the replay into the Blood Bowl file, so I gotta restart Blood Bowl. I'm good at this. I've done this before. But yeah, Girthquake, uh, I know you just got here. We, we we went over the game in detail. I tried to point out a lot of good stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, if when you go back and watch the VOD, uh, feel free to shoot them to me, shoot them to somebody else. Uh, but yeah, your, your dice were really hot. But it wasn't just that your dice were hot. You had way more pals, like fives and sixes on your dice rolls, on your block dice than were expected, and way under uh, failure dice on your dice rolls than expected. And I had one half as many pals as I was quote unquote owed. Uh, why is my. Oh, I was like, why is my Steam not showing something wrong? Probably. Oh. Titus, you didn't you didn't have to send me anything. I do appreciate it though. Did not have to do that. I just I just saw it, but oh. It's very kind of you. But no, what what was, what was I saying before I got distracted? Uh yeah, I, I'm, I'm just a dude. I'm not actually, like, crazy good at Blood Bowl. I'm, like, I'm like decently good at Blood Bowl, and I play new people in spins and make them feel silly by playing playing flings with a movement nine piece. <laughs> I'm not a good Blood Bowl player. I just play one on TV. But I believe this is a miners game? Get this pulled up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was this sent in by UJ Woods or was this sent in by Tonks? Okay. So we'll try to watch from J Woods' perspective for the most part then. 
So let's just take a quick survey. I don't know anything about this game. Uh, as opposed to the last match, I was not a part of this game. So we'll, we'll try and give some unbiased opinion. All right. So got some good source development. We got a Slibly. It's great. We got a good Skink. And what are we against? Against three Blitzers. So Diving Tackle is, is a threat. Three Catchers. This is looking like a good matchup. And any inducements that we had to worry about before I forget about them? No. Okay. Just Slibly. And Slibly was making up for a lost source, I'm assuming? Double T, double power. Indeed. Indeed. Well, you, you can put it on opposite sides of the cage. It just won't do much unless the Saurus is holding it. <laughs> um, so, really, against that, you need to have four guard to defend it again in a true cage. But also, defending against Leap plays... He, okay. Quick, quick thing about Leap and Kislev. The thing about Kislev games is no matter what you do... There is going to be a leap play on the ball. Just basically all the time. It is your job to ensure that that leap play is as hard as possible with as many dodges, leaps, uh, red dice as possible. But no matter what you do, there is going to be a play on the ball. And you just have to accept that you did the best that you could. <laughs> I mean, that, that's my good quick, but I, I'm really just a dude, like, I'll, I'll, I'll hop in chat with anybody while playing a spin game. I'm, I'm not like a, a big internet personality, it's not a parasocial thing, I'm, I'm just a dude on Discord. Because, like, the, you see, the, the thing is, Girthquake, I've not actually been doing the streaming thing for very long, uh, and most of the other people in... A lot of the people in chat, like the regulars, like Glava, Glava was around when I started doing like the Rookie Spotlight, like the introductory class to Rookie Spotlight. So maybe it's just like the mild parasocial thing has come because you didn't catch the start of it, so it seems like it's more than it is. Let's see. Line of scrimmage hits. It's good. Um, very aggressive posturing for a score. I actually wouldn't hate seeing. No, because because here here's what this does, right? And this gives options for either a quick score, or baiting, moving to the side, and just not scoring. And just trying to get behind the behind the lizards. So this is like, okay. Croxagore's given a 1 in 9 dodge, or a 2 plus leap. I think you're usually better off hitting one of these. But they are blodge and don't have tackle, so this is fine too. Slibly doesn't have Mighty Blow. Yeah, Slibly not having Mighty Blow makes me think that uh, your Blitz should have been... Ooh, actually. That's fine. Usually I like to Blitz with the Mighty Blow still. And you could use Slibly for something else. Screening off a little bit. Okay, I don't hate this. And then you bring this in to put the guard here. Okay, okay. It's not bad. That's not bad. These do only have two pluses to get away, though. So be aware of that. Oh, uh, I'm 26. <laughs> yeah, I'm, um... Yeah. 
This is where you get inverted. But kids love are gonna invert you basically no matter what. But uh, Elliot, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, most of the people in Blood Bowl, in the Blood Bowl 2 community, are older. So I, I am uh, relatively young in comparison. Yeah, that was an unforced two-turn score. So I, th I think you're usually just fine with that. Like, whatever. Not much you can stop a stop there. If they want to score on turn two, like, you can't stop that. But you would rather them score fast than slow anyways. So now you're just looking to pick up the ball, put it in a cage, and stand, stand with the ball for a couple millennia. It is going to be harder against a Strength Forge. It's going to be harder against the Leap. Uh, you're probably looking to have a Vangabus. Well, no, it's a cage and you screen off the cage situation. Uh, but it really depends on where the ball is and where your pieces are. So, ideally, you have like a... Something like this screens off against Leap pretty well. You have the double layered with a gap in between, and that's pretty nice. Um, another thing you can do to help against sleep is, so you have your cage, right? So you have your cage. And that's, like, not super secure. You just leap in, but then you screen off the cage. Or s something like this. And that forces leaps and dodges earlier. Uh, I think that makes it that the most effective against leap is you get your finger bus. And yes, like Lava is saying, it's a little harder against uh, with skinks. But a finger bus is just a cage with two players in the middle. Uh, normally, you want to have. The side that's closest to the enemy, you want this to be non-ball carrier with guard or something. Like, this, you, I usually want this to be a guard piece. And then your ball carrier is away from your opponent. And this does a couple things. Uh, this means that in order to leap, they have to run around. But also, if this is a guard piece, they're leaping to here, and it pushes the ball back towards your team in the front, towards the enemy's end zone. <laughs> but really, uh, best solution is, in this situation, you're you're going to have a hard time, just in general. Kids love skinks, strength four, it's really hard. You want to do like a Venga bus with a couple screen pieces. And the point of the screen pieces is just to prevent an easy leap, prevent all the movement, force GFIs, that sort of thing. So, but, again, dice or dice, that can fail. And Vengabus can be horizontal, too. Like, you can go two side-by-side side rather than one in front, one in back. But the side-by-side, side, it's like, you want the ball to be hit towards your team or towards the opponent's end zone. Skip the setup a little bit. I think the setup is fine. You're taking your hits with Mighty Blow. And then I would really like to see... Hits on Blitzers are good. Hits on Catchers that... the. The catcher without blodge would be nice. Yes, yes. The thing with leap is that you don't always leap, but the constant threat of leap from Kislev means that your opponent is forced to play around it or get punished. And lizards, indeed, their movement eight skinks and strength four uh, really forces a lot of unfortunate, like, block dice and dodges or, or screening that you don't want to do. 
But the diving tackle is also really powerful against skinks. And there's there's three blitzers in this game. And the jump up. Oh, don't forget about jump up. I like keeping the ball back here. It's pretty safe. Yeah, either a mispositioned square or just a lucky pickup roll within tackle zones or dodges or leaps or that sort of thing. And this is very aggressive from the catchers. At this point, I wouldn't mind getting a, a presence like over here or over here. Or even just uh, hitting one of these on three dice, yeah. Get, get your strength five mighty below hit. Yeah, I like that. I, I, that, that's a turn ordering mistake right there. Your ball is super exposed right now. You don't want to really use the Croxagore until you've got the ball in a safe spot. And like, the, these block hits are fine, but the non-block Croxagore hit is really risky. I like putting Slibly in there. This should be mostly fine, but there is, like, a two-die play available if we mark this and take a leap into here, hit the ball. But just because there is a leap play doesn't mean it's a good time to go for it. Diving tackle on a skink. Annoying, but manageable. It does look like we're going for the leap play. Uh, normally, I agree. A blitz backwards usually isn't ideal. But as lizards, you're only getting a couple tiles into the enemy side of the pitch. So I don't think it's as powerful against lizards. Does get a removal. Ball is very, very dangerous spot. Trips, trips the dodge. So now, first things first, you really want to secure this ball. And I think my my preferred way of doing it in this position is I'd be looking to remove these two pit pieces out of the way. All of the Kislev are behind your team. So you're between the Kislev and the ball, oddly enough. So this could be really bad for the Kislev. Uh, as long as you can free something off one of these diving tackle pieces... So you're probably going to be forced to blitz this blitzer right here. And figure it out from there. Biggest dickus. <laughs> okay. Some basage. I actually do think this hit is nice because it does tell you if you're able to make a play for the ball. Uh, and I, I, do, I do think the Blitz should have been on one of the diving tackle pieces. We are securing the ball. That's good. Bear does make that a little wonkier. And the ball is mostly secure. Do just get the six on the dodge. Very fortunate. The ball is mostly safe now. I think I would have taken this one die. But that's like a judgment call right there. And you probably go ahead and dodge your skink to avoid the mighty blow hit. That was very fortunate. 
Ran out of time. Oh, okay, that's fair. That's fair. That happens. I. No, no shame in that. No shame in that. Because especially against Kislev, if you haven't played against them, uh, it's very hard to think through all the possibilities. Especially as a new coach. Uh, did you forget about Diving Tackle? That looks like you forgot about Diving Tackle because it hasn't activated yet. Yeah, Crocs is in a good spot. <laughs> it sure did. Yep, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Eldurier, I think that is. Thank you for the follow. It's much appreciated. Uh, I don't think I would. I think you just, I think you take the punch. Uh, good idea to make moves closer to the ball first. Uh, I, I actually, I, I word it differently. It's important to take moves most relevant to the ball first. Whether that's getting a scoring threat, whether that's moving the ball carrier, whether that's moving the pieces around the ball carrier. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. We'll still still give it a thorough watch. Most of this is good. This frees up diving tackle on the on the blitzer. Good. <laughs> Boy, do I have an article about that. You know, I bet you do. I do like this, it cuts off the direct line and the diagonals are through diving tackle. This could just be a leap though. Yep, jump up. Do you have sidestep? Jump up, leap, play. I will say, with uh, three skinks out, need to be a little more proactive about defending the ball. That was an unfortunate leap. Got, got the one. And this is like the play. Yep. And before going for the pickup, I'd be going for your two die hits with block, yeah. Especially with this mighty blow. Yeah. Get these two mighty blow hits and then go for your pickup in the end zone. Hell, you could you could actually blitz No you can't. You already blitzed. I knew that. I was testing you. Bring Slibly back. Ooh, that's really good. That's very good, uh to clear that up to help deal with this on the next turn. Not have to rely on the, the, the really stupid, or the bonehead, whatever it's called. It's bonehead, right? That being said, I wouldn't have gone for the no block hit. I think I would have rather scored on turn 7. It does open up a way for one turn, but it's not super easy with movement 7 anyways. Unfortunate. Take a mighty blow hit and then uh, do nothing else. Yeah, that should have been that should have been a two die, but because of jump up, like leap around, hit from right here. That's what it should have been. Yeah, got, got a little lucky, but for Tree Woods, that drive. Uh, forgot about the, the diving tackle. Jump up. 
playing a little bit of Havoc. For, maybe forgot about the movement penalty. Yeah, you, you can put Slibly and Crocs in the end zone to potentially catch the scatter. That's a little optimization thing. It doesn't normally have an impact, but like 1% of the time it does give you the touchdown that you would have lost, which is like, you take those odds. Marginal chance of success. Because it's a 3 plus, 3 plus fails and scatters into one of those two squares, and then on a 6 plus you still get the touchdown. That's worth taking, it's worth considering, that sort of thing. Because there's also like a chance it scatters to one, they fail the catch and it scatters back to the skink. Little, little optimization. That being said, you would not be the first coach to get punished by not doing the tiny optimization when you go for a 1 in 36 pickup with like Agi 5. I know, like, especially towards the end of games, I get super lazy about that sort of thing if it's already, like, a decided match. Which I shouldn't, but I'm only human. We've all been there. This is fine, I like this. Keep your skinks safe. And what you can you can also do is you just keep the one skink back, go for the handoff later. And try to deal with the blitzers if you can. Because the blitzers diving tackle should be raising alarm bells for you. This mighty blow diving tackle is really obnoxious. And something I, I will also say is... Giving people a 1 in 36 to get away usually doesn't amount to much. Unless you wanted to occupy that square anyways. Because especially, like, uh, even putting the Croxagor on these, if the catcher really wants to go somewhere, it's a 1 in 36 leap. This is a tricky spot. Um, just pause real quick while we think. Let's get that stunned off the screen. So you're always taking that hit with block on the on the two die. Mark the other the mighty blood blitzer. Really need to figure out where the ball's going before we get too attached to any plan. Right now these blitzers can really breach it no matter where you go. Uh yes, it, it does make it a little harder. This skin could have probably been up a square or two. And make a better handoff play. Hmm. Yeah, so, so something you can do is if this skink was over here even, that gives you options. But the kids have, have really just advanced down the pitch on you. Down several players. So this, this is actually a decently difficult half. Because you're down two skinks. And when you have two skinks, there's a lot less options than four skinks. So I think you kind of ignore the line of scrimmage at the moment. You take this hit and follow. And then you blitz this other blitzer and figure out where the ball is going. Okay, uh, this is going to be a based cage that's very dangerous. Because that allows just a... A hit on one die, two die, red dice, whatever. Followed by a blitz without a, a leap here. Yeah, putting a blodger on a source is a great idea. Because you can just kind of annoy them for a while. It does help. That's a lot better. Get the bear down. Don't follow that. Good. If that broke, it was really, really good. Having the big guys just square off, I think it's better for the lizards. Because they don't have... Don't really want to deal with... The, the crocs gore staring at each other is fine. Yeah. 
Massive hit. Croxagore ball. Yeah. Against Kislev, not having a base cage means they don't have to take a leap. And... Being based on my birthday. You got it. How's it going, Coconut? But the, the main thing against Kislev is just not giving them an easy way in. Give, make it hard for them. Because they're still going to have the option to go in. But... Kislev coaches are like elf coaches. They minimize three pluses as much as possible. They minimize four pluses, and they, they, they'll take those two pluses like candy, though. Bait them in with the idea of a, it's just a simple two plus, two plus leap. Nothing can go wrong. <laughs> Happy girth day. And then the Croxigores hit each other. Okay. This this is a very tricky spot. I don't actually think there's a clean way out of the situation as the Lizards. The clean way out is actually defending your Skinks better in the first drive. Because it's not really a... Oh, I have four Skinks. I can afford to play a little risky with them. It's, I have four Skinks. I need to keep three of them. And with a Mighty Blow Leap piece and Diving Tackle everywhere... You gotta be very careful with them. I almost prefer this spot for the Crux the source, but it would just get the surf, right? If the catcher had sidestep, it could go there. Yep, this is a hard spot, though. Uh, probably don't follow. Just keep that based. So now that the Croxagore is free, it's a little rough. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is, this is a very hard spot to play in as both teams now. Because the Lizards only have one player to deal with the ball, and the Kislev have no players to deal with the lizards. And please don't take this dodge of diving tackle. Leave that on the ground. You very much need it. Oh, that was so risky. I mean, it was a 55% dodge, but still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very... These are the same player. That's why I keep calling them both crack scores. That's a good point, Lava. I don't. I didn't actually mention that. There, these are literally the same. The same stat line: six five one nine, six five one nine. Prehensile tail, mighty blow, thick skull, bonehead. Yep, that's all the skinks. So now, in order to win, we had we need a source pickup. That does not help that idea. And I, I, ooh, actually, I would have gone for, I would have gone for the surf here. Instead of taking this hit, hit here, push, push, surf. And once, because once you get these surfs off, guaranteed player removals, and you can actually pick up the ball. Oh, this is- oh, no, no, this is good, too. This is good, too. Never mind, never mind. Ignore me, ignore me. This is great, this is great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was just seeing it the other way. I was just seeing it the other way. Serving the blodge is probably even better. So ignore me, ignore me. Yeah, that, that was a very good surf. That was- that was also fine. I was just focusing on the, the Blitzer, but the Blitzer doesn't matter as much now that all the Skinks are gone. Who cares about Diving Tackle? Oh, 
Okay, and then here? You serve this other blitzer. You serve this other blitzer, then you go for your pickup. So, you hit this from here, or here, push them there, push, push. That sort of thing. And then you go for your pickup with the source and hope that you win the game. Yep, this is good. Honestly, I don't I don't hit a foul here. But I think I care more about trying to pick up the ball. But yep, th this is a good surf. This is exactly how I was going to do it. Uh, I think I would have just left you there, but I, I understand what you're going for. And you gotta reroll it because you gotta get in the scoring range. But yeah, and, and at this point, you've done everything you could. It's just a matter of whether or not you actually pick up the ball, which you don't have as much control over as you would like. Okay, and activate, activate this player. Uh, surround the ball a little bit. Actually, what you should be doing... Yeah. Activate that player, it fails, that's fine. What you should do... You have multiple players here. Right? Next thing you do... Get a scoring threat if you can. So that's probably this player. So you get them into scoring range, now. Or this player, or this player. Somebody goes in scoring range. In case you have to do a silly pickup handoff. You pick up the ball with a third player, so you have scatter threats. <laughs> and, uh, then you pray. Yep, basing there, that's fine. So, you need a scoring threat. You need a scoring threat. Before you go for the pickup, you need a scoring threat. You need a scoring threat. Okay, you got that. Now we're... Ooh, you're not able to get in scoring range. You blocked your path. You gotta take Geophytes. No, you gotta take the Geophytes! Oh, no! You, you had to take the Geophytes here! Yeah, you... Okay, okay. You blocked off your diagonals. Remember how we were talking about diagonals in uh, Girthquake's game against me? You blocked off your own diagonals... So that you couldn't get into scoring range, and now you're forced to do a handoff and two more GFIs. Whereas if here, you just took these GFIs with the reroll, you could have won the game. This should have been a one game from here. That was a mistake. Yep, and the push here... Rookie mistake of blocking their own path and not counting. And honestly, I will be an advocate for this always. In Rebel, there's a mod loader that has this texture pitch that gives actual numbers on the sidelines. It's very, very, very helpful. Even as an experienced coach with a thousand hours in the game, I check these numbers every single turn. And that tells you if you've done good counting or bad. When you're standing here, there's 13 tiles to the end zone. 12 tiles to the end zone. 11 tiles to the end zone. 10, 9. One tile to the end zone. I highly recommend downloading the mod loader and getting the numbered, numbered sideline downloaded. It's so good, you'll never go back. And then, once you enjoy it, I need you to DM Mongoose and nag him about, Hey, did you see this numbered sideline in the mod loader? It's fantastic, you should download it. <laughs> oh. oh, it is it is fantastic. I love it. Um, actually, uh, last last season's playoffs, I I didn't turn off the playoff pitch because I had the number sidelines until Popsicle put it in the modeler. Uh, Outcast in 
the rebel the main the main rebel discord there is a like roles channel so you you click on it and it can give you the role for like the the modding channel and then you download the mod loader and you run the mod loader and you click a check mark and that's it um it's also in the rebel casting discord um if you need help finding it you can ask and help i need an admin or you can send me a dm i'll try to help you at some point but with that being said that is all we have for today those two games done nice little quick stream uh, i was having a lot of fun today and download the mod loader Get that pitch installed for everybody that gets annoyed by counting. Because counting is dumb. Math is stupid. <laughs> Let's see if there's... Is there any revelers going on or anybody else that we can raid? No, no, Earthquake! I, I, I do the stream at a time that's convenient for me. That's not necessarily convenient for everybody else. Runbad's playing. Let's raid Runbad. But uh, you, the, the VOD is up. You you can go back and watch the VOD. All the advice is still there. And I do save them. I do save them if anybody ever has like a pass VOD they want to see. Uh, I think I forget to put them public on my YouTube page. But I, I do have them all saved. As many as I, I can. So let's, let's raid Ren Bad. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. It's a lot of fun. Chat was good. Glava, always helpful with the advice and chat. And you all have a good one.